Four out of 45 American presidents have been assassinated. Many more have eluded attempts thanks to heroic acts, well-trained guards, misfiring weapons, and sometimes sheer dumb luck, especially President Bill Clinton. President Clinton was the target of several assassination plots over the course of his two terms in the White House from 1993 to 2001. Bullets, bombs, and planes were all used in efforts to take the 42nd president's life, with three different assassination attempts occurring in 1994. According to the New York Times, in January of that year, Ronald Gene Barber, a 45-year-old veteran and unemployed limousine driver from Orlando, Florida, sought to shoot the POTUS on his daily jog through the National Mall. His first problem, Clinton was in Europe at the time. But according to Mel Ayton's book, Hunting the President, Threats, Plots, and Assassination Attempts, from FDR to Obama, Barber's plot was ultimately foiled when he told his neighbor, I have this vision of stomping that woman Hillary Clinton to death with hobnail boots. He reportedly claimed to this neighbor that he would come to be known as Clinton's assassin before driving from Orlando to Washington, D.C. and spending multiple days casing out the area while carrying a gun. After a trial in 1995, he was sentenced to five years in prison. On the evening of September 11, 1994, a man named Frank Eugene Corder stole a red and white Cessna 150 single-engine airplane and crashed it into the White House lawn early the next day at 1.49 a.m. He was killed upon impact. Corder's brother John said Frank had been upset by the recent death of their father and the breakup of his marriage. According to the New York Times, officials claimed Corridor was targeting the Clinton family by aiming for the White House, but he died when the plane crashed through the branches of a magnolia tree planted by Andrew Jackson and came to rest in a crumpled heap two stories below the Clintons' unoccupied bedroom. Clinton had once again skirted danger by being elsewhere during the incident. This time, the family was staying at nearby Blair House, an exclusive residence also known as the President's Guest House. According to Hunting the President, on October 29, 1994, 26-year-old Francisco Martin Duran of Colorado Springs, Colorado, put on a trench coat, slipped a suicide note into his pocket, and headed to the fence surrounding the north lawn of the White House. Using his SKS semi-automatic rifle, Duran started firing towards several men in suits on the grounds, reportedly believing that one was Clinton. He managed to fire off 29 rounds before tourists tackled him, subduing the attacker until Secret Service agents took him into custody. Luckily, no one was injured. According to the British Journal of Political Science, his only words while being handcuffed were, I wish you had shot me. While Barber and Corder's attempts to kill President Clinton failed, in part due to their target not being where they expected him to be, when Duran made his effort, Clinton was inside the White House watching a football game. According to the New York Times, Duran pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity, which was rejected by the jury. His projected release date from prison is in 2029. This madman thought that gunfire was the way to make a statement. But these two civilians made an even stronger one. While these three attempts in 1994 were carried out by lone wolves with axes to grind, other attempts included international terrorism plots at the direction of Osama bin Laden. According to The Guardian, in November 1994, bin Laden's followers planned to bomb Clinton's motorcade during a trip to the Philippines, but the plan was abandoned because the security was deemed impenetrable, and a second plot in February 1998 came to an abrupt end when Clinton's trip to Pakistan was canceled. In 1996, Bill Clinton narrowly averted a third attempt by bin Laden when his motorcade was scheduled to cross a bridge in Manila, where a bomb had been placed. According to the Homeland Security Digital Library, the motorcade was rerouted just in time after a security detail was tipped off. For PBS Frontline, bin Laden's plan to kill Clinton wasn't just limited to planting bombs. One of his associates, who became an informant for the FBI, claimed that they had also considered using bullets containing poison, saying, that way if the shot didn't kill him, he would die by poisoning. 